PPH is the most common form of major obstetric hemorrhage. The traditional definition of primary PPH is the loss of 500 milliliters or more of blood from the genital tract within 24 hours of the birth of a baby. And further classification, causative factors have been discussed in our PPH video, and we encourage you to watch the previous video first to have a brief idea and better understanding. Let's dig in to the today's topic, PPH management. Whole management is according to the RCOG guideline, and you can refer the guidelines later as well. Risk factors for PPH may present antenatally or intrapartum. Care plans must be modified when risk factors arise. We should aware the risk factors for PPH and should take these into account when counseling women about place of delivery. Women with known risk factors for PPH should only be delivered in a hospital with a blood bank on site. To minimize the risk, antenatal anemia should be investigated and treated appropriately as this may reduce the morbidity associated with PPH. Prophylactic uterotonics, such as oxytocin, should be routinely offered in the management of the third stage of labor in all women, as they reduce the risk of PPH. For women without risk factors for PPH delivering vaginally, oxytocin 10 international units by intramuscular injection is the agent of choice for prophylaxis in the third stage of labor. A higher dose of oxytocin is unlikely to be beneficial. Visual estimation of peripartum blood loss is inaccurate and clinical signs and symptoms should be included in the assessment of PPH. A multidisciplinary team involving senior members of staff should be summoned to attend to women with major PPH, that is blood loss of more than 1,000 millimeters and ongoing bleeding or clinical shock. Once the PPH is identified, go through the ABC approach for the resuscitation. Managing the airway and breathing as the first steps and position the patient flat and keep the woman warm using appropriate available measures. Intravenous access using two 14 gauge cannula and urgent venipuncture for group and screen. Full blood count and coagulation screen, including fibrinogen should be done. Pulse, respiratory rate and blood pressure recording every 15 minutes and commence warmed crystalloid infusion until blood is available, infuse up to 3.5 out of warmed clear fluids, initially two out of warmed isotonic crystalloid. Further fluid resuscitation can continue with additional isotonic crystalloid or colloid. The most common cause of primary PPH is uterine atony and exclude other causes by examining the placental membranes and doing the abdominal examination and vaginal examination for trauma. Palpate the uterine fundus and rub it to stimulate contractions and ensure that the bladder is empty. Oxytocin 5 international units by slow intravenous injection, followed by oxytocin infusion. 40 international units in 500 ml isotonic crystalloids at 125 ml per hour, unless fluid restrictions are necessary. And ergometrine 0.5 mg by slow intravenous or intramuscular injection is given if bleeding is not controlled but it is contraindicated in women with hypertension. And carboprost 0.25 mg by intermuscular injection, repeated at intervals of not less than 15 minutes to a maximum of eight doses, need to be given if bleeding can't be controlled with previous medications, but need to be used with caution in women with asthma. Misoprostol 800 micrograms sublingually or rectally is given if bleeding continues. If pharmacological measures fail to control the hemorrhage, surgical interventions should be initiated sooner rather than later. Conservative surgical interventions may be attempted as second line, depending on clinical circumstances and available expertise. Intrauterine balloon tamponade is an appropriate first line surgical intervention for most women where uterine atony is the only or main cause of hemorrhage. Hemostatic suturing is performed by the B. Lynch suture to control the bleeding, and if fails successive ligation of one uterine artery, then both uterine arteries, if not controlled, low uterine arteries, then one ovarian artery, and if not controlled, both ovarian arteries are ligated. This is called the stepwise uterine devascularization. If bleeding continues despite above all measures, hysterectomy is the last option. In women presenting with secondary PPH, an assessment of vaginal microbiology should be performed by high vaginal and endocervical swabs, and appropriate use of antimicrobial therapy should be initiated when endometritis is suspected. A pelvic ultrasound may help to exclude the presence of retained products of conception, 
although the diagnosis of retained products is unreliable. Surgical evacuation of retained placental tissue should be undertaken or supervised by an experienced clinician.